these are guys we're targeting in the middle rounds of drafts with upside that we think could finish the year, um, really returning on the investment of their draft position and getting us into playoffs and winning us championships. So with that, I will throw it to you, Steph, for your first mid-round league winner. Who you got? So my first league winner, I feel like this guy could have been in this segment the last like two or three years because it's Marvin Jones Jr., the wide receiver two from Let's uh, go. Detroit. MJJ is getting the respect he deserves. Dude, the MJJ movement is strong. Shout out to you, Alex. Shout out to our boy, Mike Lou at BDGE, because we are all over the MJJ hype train. Right now, his ADP per Fantasy Pros is the wide receiver 37, which is essentially the seventh round. I mean, he's been slept on pretty much every year. Jones is like I get him exact. every year. I've literally drafted <laughs> Marvin Jones in our league that we're in together. If you go back and look at the records, I think I've had him like four years in a row as my flex. <laughs> Shout out to our guys in uh, Sunday's Finest. But Jones is exactly the type of guy that you're looking for in the mid rounds of your drafts. When you're looking at you know, maybe your fourth or fifth wide receiver, like you said, Jones is giving you that upside to win you a week from your flex or wide receiver two spot, especially in shootout matchups you can kind of predict if you're putting the line at where jones finishes assuming he plays 13 or more games if we put that line at wide receiver 34 uh so that's his that's his uh expert consensus ranking is ecr on fantasy pros i'm smashing the over on that jones was 19th in ppr points per game finishes the wide receiver 27 last year and one of the first thing that stands out to me when we're looking at jones yeah, last year and even before that is the red zone volume. Jones had 11 red zone receptions last season, which was ninth amongst wide receivers. And this was just in 13 games. He scored nine touchdowns in two of the last three seasons. And for reference on that touchdown number, last year, the receiver opposite of, of Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, led the league in touchdowns with 11. And Jones was right there with him in the top five in terms of total touchdowns. And it looks like Matt Stafford airing it out to the receivers is the only way this Lions offense is really going to score. You know, a stat I read, uh, which actually blew me away, this was just on ESPN, is that in the 12 games where Jones, Galladay, and Danny Amendola were all healthy and in the lineup, Jones and Galladay had a 20% target share. So they were about even. Jones actually got one extra target over Galladay wow. when everybody was healthy, active, and on the field. So don't let the Kenny G hype. You know, we all love Kenny G. I, I think we have him at our wide receiver six or seven. I mean, don't let him scare you away from grabbing Marvin Jones in the mid rounds. And the Lions brought in some great talent in the draft, but they lost their star corner, big play, Darius Slay. I, I love Jeff Okuda, the, the corner they drafted third overall out of uh, Ohio State, but there aren't many, if, if any, rookies that can come into this brutal Detroit defense and do what Slay was doing last year. So expect these shootout game scripts to continue. Jones isn't going to give you, you know, any sort of consistency, but he will have those five or six massive boom games. I remember last year he had a four touchdown game against the Minnesota Vikings. He had a game with 126 yards against the Raiders last year. So you can, you can get those five or six just weak winning weeks out of Marvin Jones. And with DeAndre Swift now in the backfield in Detroit, we'll see if the Lions can get a run game going for once. Maybe that uh, that brings down the touchdown numbers for Jones, but that's a risk I am very much willing to take in the mid-rounds of my draft. Yeah, absolutely. And if the Lions can't get a running game going this season, they might be the 2012 Lions, which I posted <laughs> uh, a fact on Twitter today that said in 2012, Matt Stafford had 727 pass Insane. attempts. Insane. And Megatron had 204 targets. <laughs> and, you know, I do expect them to get a better running game going this year with Kyrion still there and then DeAndre Swift as well. But bottom line is the Lions are going to throw the ball a ton. Jones and Galladay are going to see a ton of targets. And Steph, you brought up a lot of good points comparing Jones and Galladay. They're actually a lot closer to a 1A, 1B situation than people realize. Yeah. When they were healthy last season, Marvin Jones in games that he played, he played 90% of snaps. Kenny G was at 87% of snaps in games that he played. So in terms of who's on the field, they're both out there essentially all the time for Detroit. Um, it really just depends on what the defense is showing Matt Stafford that day, what kind of looks they're getting. <laughs> and it seems like when Stafford locks in on Marvin Jones, he does not look the other way. He's had a couple. Um, he had the four touchdown game last season. I want to say he had another one the year before. Um, so he's definitely had several blow up games in his career and he gives you that upside. And in worst case scenario with Marvin Jones, he's giving you like three catches for 50 yards or four catches for 60 yards or something like that, which isn't great, but getting him at this ADP and maybe putting him in a flex spot with the upside 
it definitely is worth worth that value. So yeah. I love the pick on Marvin Jones. I could talk all we can make a whole podcast episode <laughs> out of Marvin Jones and I think we'd have enough content to talk about. So sixty yards. I cannot, a game. Applaud, I cannot <laughs> applaud you enough for that pick stat. Well, uh, hopefully we can see the Lions go back to that in, in uh, that 2012 season and see 730 pass attempts from Matt Stafford. I, I don't know what was going on that year. Like, did they even run the ball? <laughs> I guess not. Who was their running back? Was that the Joik Bell days or Mikel LaShore or someone like that? If you're yeah, listening, before... check it out for us. Drop it on our Twitter page or something. We don't have time to look it up here on the fly. Too many hot takes to get into, but 